you have some slides, you have some negatives, and you need to get them scanned. What settings should you use? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about how to use your Epson scanner to scan your slides and your negatives. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. In the past video, the one just before this one, I talked about how to scan prints documents, birth certificates, that type of thing. This is very similar, but there are some changes that you have to watch out for. So let's get into it and talk about how to scan properly. So scanning negatives or scanning slides is very similar to scanning prints. We want to click on our Epson scan software, click on yes, because we have it set up for admin so that it has all the privileges. It was set up from the last time that we scanned, which was when we were scanning those photos. Now, again, I like to use professional mode. The settings, I do not have any settings in here, so I don't worry about that. The document type is still set up though from when we were scanning those photos in the last video, and that's at reflective. This is not going to work, so we need to go and change it to film. Now, ask you what film type are you scanning positive which is slides color negative film or black and white negative film we're scanning color negative film image type which how what are you scanning at what setting are you scanning at i like to scan at the highest setting which is 48 bit color and as i mentioned in the past video i'll even scan some black and white in this and convert them later you're quite welcome to scan it in 16 bit grayscale it actually works quite well but I prefer having the color and then converting it myself in 99% of the cases because that's just me. Now, resolution, this, doesn't, this makes no difference whatsoever. Now, at this point, what I've done is I put my slides, or in this case, my negatives, in the machine and I have it ready to scan. So I'm going to hit preview, but I also did something so that we get an error. Let's just see here. I'm going to hit preview. It's getting ready to do a preview scan and it's warming itself up. It's getting the light turned on. It's about to do the scan and it's telling me, please remove the document mat and or close the document cover. And that's the lid of the scanner. And what it is, is I did not take out the little piece that is well put in there to hold documents down. I've left it in there because a lot of people call me and says, why is it? It will not scan. This is why. And what you have to do is you have to remove this piece here and put it all the way so that you can actually scan. So you can click on OK at this point and then you can hit the preview scan once again. And it's going to go through and it's going to do our preview scan at this point because it's ready to do it. And it's thinking it's warming up. It's getting ready to do the scan. And here we go. And it's just doing a rough preview scan at this point. Now, if you know what your resolution settings are, if you've done this enough, you can set this. But a lot of people set this and then they don't go back and check it later. And like I mentioned in the previous video, we want our file sizes between 30 and 60 megs. That's, that's our file size that we're looking for. And if we look here at 300 DPI, we're only getting a 638 kilobyte file. So we want to go in and crank that sucker up. So we want to crank it up. In this case, I happen to know where. And up to about 2400 DPI will give us a nice 39 megabyte file for 35 millimeter slides and 35 millimeter negatives. Now, as you can see here, we have it on the thumbnail view. This is where the thumbnail view shines is when you're doing uh, negatives when you're doing slides it's really good at doing the cropping it's really good at identifying the individual ones so i like thumbnail view on this the only time that i will change it is if the negative or slide is really overexposed or really underexposed it can have trouble finding it or if the negative or slide is torn now these are obviously sitting the wrong way. So what we can do is we can click on each one of these and we can rotate them so that they're upright. Or using the control button, we can hit control and click on these and then batch rotate them. So that's what this is for. This is for reversing them. Now, it's pretty hard to see if this is the right direction in this view. If you're not sure if you got it the right way, you can zoom in 
like this by using the size of your thumbnail. And then if it is backwards, you can reverse it so that it is correct. Obviously it was correct to begin with. I prefer using the, the smaller thumbnails uh, so I can see everything all at once. Now, the way that I've got it set up here, I've got now currently set up for 2400 DPI, so I'm getting 39 megabyte files from each one of these. So we're ready to go or almost ready. If you notice the colors look a little off on this. So what you can do is you can go in and you can clean up the colors. And the best way to do it that well, I like to do is I click on color restoration and I like to see what it can do from there. And again, this is a basic video. We're going to get more in depth in a future video, but if I did all of these videos fully in depth, it would be hours of time. So let's go through some of the adjustments and settings down here. First, unsharp mask. What is unsharp mask? What's well, the exact opposite of what it says it is? Unsharp mask makes your images sharper. And again, you have low, medium, high. I like to set it at the medium setting because I find it works the best. I don't like to over sharpen because that's just, you, you've ruined it. You're, you can't un over sharpen an image very easily. And the low setting I just find does nothing. So medium for me is fine. Grain reduction. I use grain reduction once in a while. Unfortunately, grain reduction, what it does is it more softens the image than anything. So <laughs> You're, un, you're sharpening it here and then you're unsharpening it down here so that it doesn't look as grainy. I just don't use grain reduction very much. Color restoration, like I said, it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. That's what your color restoration does. Backlight correction. Backlight correction is designed if your subject is really dark. You can click on it and it will lighten up your subject. And what I like to do is I like to go through, select any ones that I find that my subject is really dark, then apply to backlight correction only to those. I don't like to apply it to all the different images because some of them it just blows out, makes them too light, and it's just not worth it. All right, so now we move down to dust removal or digital ice technology. As I mentioned again in the previous video when we were scanning the prints, I find both of these settings just don't do anything for me or for the pictures. So I'm just not really happy with them. So I've stopped using them and I use, well, there's a lot of stuff I can use in Photoshop to fix up my images that you know, I find is even better. The problem that I have with applying anything like this is that it's applied to the file, the file is saved, and you can't undo this once the file is saved. Whereas if you do it in Photoshop and you don't like the look that it's giving you, you can easily back up. In this case, you're applying it, then you're going in and checking them. Then, then do you want it? Well, maybe I'll scan them again. And I just find this is just useless. So this is the basic settings that I would set for doing a scan. And then if I like them, then I can click on scan and it will go in and scan. Now we're going to jump over to this side just so I can explain what these check marks are. When I'm scanning, you notice it says here, it's scanning one of four. Whatever has a check mark on it is what the scanner will scan. And you can hear in the background, the scanner is now doing its scan. If I unselected this one here, it would scan this one, this one, and this one, but it wouldn't scan this one. If I unselected these three, it would only scan this one. So these check marks are designed for what you want to scan. Now, jumping back over here, we can see, and you can hear in the background, the scanner running. It is now scanning one of four. Time remaining, three minutes. That's usually way off. <laughs> That's all there is for the basic scanning. Now, if for some reason that this has not correctly cropped your images or selected your images, you can go in and you can use the normal view just like we did when we were doing prints in the previous video. And I'm just gonna go here and I'm just gonna hit click for cancel the scan. And I'll show you what we can do here. Some of the settings will change. Yes, we want that. There is what you're going to get if we go into the normal view. You're going to have to go in and you're going to have to select the line, put the little box with the dancing ants around the image, and then do the next one, do the next one, do the next one. Now, if you get one right, you can actually hit the copy feature and you can easily move it down here. You can do the next one. But as you notice, it's a lot slower than when we use the thumbnail. 
Again, like we did before, this erases a box and this will select both of these so that when we're scanning, it's going to scan both of these. Now, how about the rotate? Well, again, the rotate doesn't work near as good as it does under thumbnail because it rotates the entire base. And as you can see, we now have these scanning standing upright, but this one is still sideways. So this rotate in this view to me is pretty much useless. I, again, prefer the thumbnail. I find it works a lot better just for so many different things and away you go from there. Now, we're just going to go in here. We're going to go quickly to where we have our pictures. And there is the one that we had scanned earlier. You can look through it. You can see, yes, there is some dust on here. There's actually a mark on the negative. There's some more dust on here, some dust up here. That's easy to edit for me in Photoshop. And I prefer doing it now because, after all, honestly, I can do a better job than what the technology can do. And if I don't like what I'm doing, I can easily back it up. Whereas when I use the dust removal or the digital ice, I have the image as the computer saw it, as the scanning software saw it. And it's just, I can't go backwards. And when you're scanning five, six, 700, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 slides, negatives, and prints, it's a lot of work to go back and do it two or three times, whereas I'd rather go through afterwards. So I hope that really helped you. I hope that you now understand the basics of scanning your slides, your negatives, and your prints, your documents. And in the future video, I'm going to actually get a bit more advanced and explain some of the other settings and how I've set it up, why it's set up like that, and what it can do. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple. <laughs> you just have to watch the settings. The biggest setting to watch is make sure that you have your uh, DPI up high enough so you're getting good resolution scans. And from that, it's pretty straightforward. If you have a lot to scan, it's repetitive. I tell people, best thing you can do is sit in front of a TV set, set everything up and start scanning and just take your time to do it and just go through it and away you go from there. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about some of the more advanced settings that you can set on your Epson scanner. I'm breaking it up to three videos because otherwise it would be like six hours of just me talking about scanning and one video that's way too long. So I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.